So uh, I guess there would be no microphone tap room without uh, some news from the herd. And um, I welcome Samuel mm -hmm. and we're really looking forward to what's new in the herd. Or what's yeah. So good morning, everybody, and thanks for coming. Um, so I won't talk about a specific bit of, of the herd, um, but uh, general news and general plans for, for the future. Um, just the usual introduction to the herd. Um, it, it's actually all about freedom zero, being able to run whatever, uh, in which, whichever situation for any purpose. Um, and notably, that's the freedom for actual users on the system. They shouldn't have to ask the uh, system administrator to, to do some crazy things like um, a partition a disk or something like this. Uh, as long as they have the right to access a disk or some area or whatever, they should be able to just run FDisk and things like this. Um, and also network access, you should be able to run a VPN as a user and things like this. There, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to. Um, and also the freedom to innovate. Uh, if you want to store your data in a different way uh, with an, uh, an experimental file system, you should be able to, uh, to do this. Um, just to try new things uh, without the fear of crashing the machine just because the system uh, will actually prevent you from doing bad things like this. Um, you would like to give a PCI card, an experimental PCI card to a program which will drive it uh, in a safe way and all kinds of things like this. And also the freedom from the programs themselves. Uh, if they crash, then okay, that's fine. If a driver crashes, okay, that's fine. Uh, it shouldn't harm the rest of the system. Um, so to give an idea, uh, this is how it works. Um, you have the kernel here, a microkernel, which only uh, handles the tasks, memory, and IPC between uh, user and uh, programs. And then you have um, several root started um, uh, services like uh, PFI net for the TCP IP stack, proc to know what is a process, uh, who has a PID and, and which identity um, has um, each process, uh, auth which knows uh, who is who and X2FS the file system. And then when you have a shell which is starting in CP, actually they are talking with X2FS to access the files and it goes through OTS so that X2FS knows uh, who is that uh, program which is asking me to read a file or whatever. And it checks with OTS uh, who he is according to what is stored on, on the file system for the permissions, I mean. Um, so the thing is, if a server crashes, then that's not really a problem. If the PFI net cr stack crashes, then that's fine. We start another one and then uh, things will continue. Um, it's nice to debug because you can run GTP on a file system and things like this. Um, the herd console is actually a user learned application, so we could implement crazy things like Chinese in text mode, uh, that is using glyphs on the fly um, to, to actually show them with a normal VGA card. Um, and the kernel itself only handles the task, memory, and IPC, and nothing more than this normally. I will talk about it more l later. Um, this also provides a virtualization at a really fine grain because it, you can choose for each program which TCP IP stack it will use, which root file system it will use, which notion of um, uh, process it will use, which notion of user it will use, and which is exactly the same as on Linux with name, um, uh, name services and uh, all kinds of separation, except that here it's deep inside the structure of the, uh, the herd that it's that way. So it's not like on Linux or we forgot to, um, to uh, separate uh, sound support, for instance, network support, etc. We forgot about this. On the herd, you cannot forget about compartmentalizing things just because that's the way it is done uh, anyway. You do not have another way than uh, having uh, separations between processes. Um, so you can do crazy things like uh, have an FTPFS running on top of the TCP IP stack and then run ISOFS, uh, opening an ISO on, on the FTP server and then run a shell within the ISO uh, image. Uh, it's like this, you, so you, you set a, a translator on FTP command and then you can open 
a URL and then start a NISO file system and then you can look at it. And the nice thing is that since um, LS just looks at the root of the ISO image, then uh, in the ISO uh, uh, translator only has to ask FTPFA to download a bit of the ISO image. So you don't have to download everything just to see what's in there. Uh, so that's really a nice thing. Um, and you can permanently store this kind of thing. So this set trans, for instance, you can store it in, in, in your home. Um, I have a little example, like here. Uh, I have a signature file, which each time I open it, I get another uh, content just because it's a translator behind, which just starts fortune for each open of the file. Uh, so you have nice things like this, which are possible thanks to uh, this kind of flexibility. And just to show you, uh, so I have a lot of processes, of course. Um, so there's X2FS here, um, the OAT server, and all kinds of and translators for different services. And if I kill one of them, then that's fine. The rest continues. Um, so the herd is a real thing. What is actually, it's really stable. Uh, I don't remember when I reinstalled uh, the boxes I'm using. Uh, this one, for instance, I've been copying over and over uh, in virtual machines between my different laptops. And I don't remember when I installed it. Um, the Debian build days are, are, are like this. So they keep building Debian packages all day long. And yes, from times to times, uh, there, there is maybe um, a program which takes all resources because it does make minus J or things like this. And then uh, the system locks, but then, yeah, that, that's the normal kind of things when um, a process tries to eat all resources of, of a system. Um, but yeah, usually it just works. Um, we have like three quarters of Debian uh, building, uh, which is really a thing because um, you don't have things uh, without patches like Firefox or uh, LibreOffice, but uh, all the dependencies basically are there except a few things like uh, Cargo and things like this, which we are, which we are uh, working on. But basically we have XFC, GNOME, KDE, these kind of things uh, do work. And it's supporting uh, upstream. So this is really an operating, an operating system which does exist uh, in, in upstream, like GCC, GLibc, LLVM. And we are working on, on Go and Rust. Uh, so that's progressing. So we have the Debian distribution, which is really well supported. We have the installation uh, working just like a normal uh, Debian um, port on, on Linux or on KFUBSD. Um, and there are GeekSSD and ARC ongoing. There is a lot of work on GeekSSD, ARC. Maybe it's on post, but there are people working on it uh, from times to times. Uh, so GeekSSD would probably provide uh, one of the most pure uh, GNU uh, operating system with a GNU kernel, etc. Uh, so it's uh, on, on its track. Um, so now, what what? What's the future? Um, the thing is, there are many, many, many existing bits in different places which just need polishing. So I will give a few examples. That's the idea of uh, in 10 percentile you get 90% uh, of the thing done, and then for the 90, for the 10 uh, remaining percent, you have to take 90% of the time. And people, a lot of people, don't take that time to make it just work completely. They had something funny, and then they start they stop there that's a bit sad because then there are a lot of things i will show which are which are not completely working but almost um then i show the uh, ongoing project ids and a couple of uh, crazy ids that we, we could experiment with so for instance there is hdbfs and ftpfs which work quite fine uh, most of the time, so you can do like you CD to a directory and then you in install all the files with that kind of name and that's really efficient because you don't have to d do downloading or wh whatever, it's just normal shell operations. Um, I think this almost works fine because uh, the HTTP server here provides a, an, um, an HTML file which HTTPFS can pass uh, correctly, uh, but there are all other kinds of uh, image of HTML f um, image um, page that HTTPFS uh, has troubles with. Um, with FTPFS, uh, it works quite fine as well. So you can just find some files because you don't remember where it is, and then it does it for you. Um, of course, you have FTP clients which can do this kind of thing, but just use your just use your shell with normal tools, and it will work fine. 
Um, we have namespace based translators, so that's a funny thing. So you can uh, look at a software.tar.gz and you append uh, colon colon here, uh, comma comma here, and then you can CD into it. So the idea is that you have a translator behind the actual uh, file system or whatever, and then it sees that you have put these um, commas, and then it will start a tarfs uh, <coughs> translator, so you can actually enter into it and then look what's in there. And again, uh, tar is indexed, so you do not have to read all of the tar file. Um, you could chain them. You have a disk image, and then you open a partition within it, and then you open the X2FS uh, file system within it. Um, so I, I'm not sure these, this one is working, uh, but it's the kind of thing that, that should be possible, and possibly it's not so many lines of code to, to get it working. So yeah, please somebody uh, have a look and have fun with implementing this. Um, MboxFS, uh, if you have an MBox file, it's all mails into just one file. Uh, you could start MboxFS and then uh, manipulate things inside it. Um, just put some random IDs. Um, that's kind of IDs you could have. Um, XMLFS, you open an XML file and then you can browse into it uh, with uh, directories. So you can find, for instance, um, the uh, H1 sections and then just get the text of each and H1 uh, section in a nice way. Um, there are um, some experiments with uh, being able to write all these kinds of translators in high level languages. Uh, so in Perl, in Lisp, in Java, in Python, um, there are uh, these are mostly experimental, but some of them are working, and it's just, just a bit of polishing the existing thing and to have something which would work and allow a lot of uh, different uh, possibilities. Um, I'm not detailing those, but there are more JFS to open a, a, a JFS uh, file system. Uh, it is read-only, but at least it, it works, but uh, right uh, uh, availability would be fine. Um, notice to notice the uh, uh, modifications of a file uh, run. I've shown it uh, with the um, Fortune uh, um, program. UnionFS to, to uh, union some file systems. Um, so these are just to polish and to, to get them uh, working really fine. Then there is ongoing work. Um, a lot of on, on the hardware support uh, um, field uh, because yeah we have to have this to, to continue uh, being able to start the herd on, on machines. Um, so recently we've introduced a PCI arbiter uh, which allows to have uh, safe concurrent access to PCI config space. Uh, up to now we would just let programs poke at IO ports and concurrently and of course uh, it would be a, a nightmare if and two programs uh, do the same at the same time. Um, so I talked about it last year. Um, the nice, the really cool thing would be to be able to use an IOMMU to make it safe. That is, the PCI arbiter would give, literally give, a PCI card to a process, just a process. It's actually fine-grained virtualization. And then um, the, the process would be able to drive the card uh, without anybody else interfering with it. And without giving that uh, process um, access to the whole memory and things like this because of DMA, uh, thanks to IOMMU. Um, so that would be really cool, um, just, just to make drivers well separated. Um, we have a tr ACPI translator uh, pending uh, commit uh, to provide access to ACPI operations, just, just like being able to shut down the machine, it's really complex to shut down the machine actually. Uh, you have to do some ACPI, um, but yes, we should have it at some point. Um, using RAMP, uh, I talked about it uh, some years ago, um, because the RAMP is really supported uh, by a lot of people and also libguestfs to access file systems uh, without having to re-implement. Uh, the thing is we don't want to, in, to, to maintain uh, file systems and device drivers because that's a lot of work and instead we can just put that into a process and um, then we just provide the pro proper interface to make it uh, interact with the rest of the system. 
Um, we have a bit of 64-bit kernel support. Uh, there are a few bits missing to let a 32-bit user land run on top of um, a 64-bit kernel. Um, so at least we could manage uh, a lot of memory easily and then try to bootstrap a 64-bit user land. Uh, it looks like an easy thing, but bootstrapping a user land but really bootstrapping, that means putting the information of 60-bit herd exists in autoconf, in GCC, in glibc, etc., etc. It's all these kind of programs which need to be, uh, um, to be made aware of this. Uh, so that's kind of work, but yeah, that, that would be really great. And also SMP support. Uh, the thing is, the herd itself is already parallel because we have several translators running in parallel and we have threads uh, which are working fine. It's just at the kernel um, uh, side that we don't have uh, SMP support, but actually Mach itself does have some support. It's just that uh, it's an old Mach that, uh, that the herd system is using uh, where SMP support wasn't updated to parsing ACPI tables and, and all kinds of things like this. Um, so it's that bit which should be done. And then, of course, fixing the bugs um, that have remained uh, since it wasn't tested for, for a long time. Uh, but uh, at least, just because I show that we, we remove uh, as much drivers from the kernel as possible, um, it should be easier because we have less uh, uh, source code to make sure uh, works in SMP uh, mode. Um, so no drivers in, in the kernel. Um, so the, for, for, for the herd system, the idea is that the kernel provides tasks, memory, and IPC. Um, that's the basics uh, that was chosen. Uh, but at the moment, we have drivers in there. And we used to have network drivers, but we have gotten rid uh, of them um, into user space. So I talked about it some years ago. Um, but we still have these drivers just because nobody took the time to move them out. Um, so how could we move them uh, to userland? Um, just do it. Well, there's one issue. It's uh, how do you actually boot the system? Um, and the solution will be uh, to just use a, another crep loaded module. So how does it boot uh, right now? Right now, uh, crep loads the kernel and two modules, and so the file system and the exec server, which knows how to exec, um, how to execute a program. Um, and the kernel has the disk driver. So the first thing that happens is that uh, X2FS starts the minimal um, uh, herdish um, translators, uh, so to know what is a process, uh, who is who, and uh, startup scripts. So the idea is that um, X2FS knows it has to start them. It tells exec you have to, exec to execute them and open files which contain the code for this. And to get the data, we use the disk drivers. And then uh, startup can start in it. And then in it can start uh, a TCP IP stack, uh, which uses uh, user level um, uh, network drivers. And so here we have a system which just works. Um, with the disk as an additional module, the whole thing will be the same, except that, yes, we have to have the grub load the disk module so that X2FS can indeed load data uh, from the disk uh, right from here. Maybe we will have to add the, uh, the PCI uh, arbiter here so that the disk driver can access safely to the PCI uh, card while later on uh, XORG will access to the PCI as well. Um, but then it's just all the same. And then we really have everything running in userland as root, um, while the kernel only handles this kind of thing. Okay, so to conclude, there are a lot of nice things that uh, we have in uh, GNU Herd and a lot of things that we could achieve if just you polished it. Um, it's, uh, it's fun to have on something, to have something starting to work. Uh, it's better to have it finished so that people can really use it. Um, it's something that I've often seen. I get patches and then they are not completely working. I say this, this, that is not all right. And then I get no response. And that's really a concern because I cannot do this myself. Uh, so sometimes people have other things to do. Okay, that's fine. Um, but yes, if people can help with just finishing the existing things, uh, that would be great. Um, 
uh, when, when I see the microkernel room uh, presentations, I see that there are a lot of uh, microkernel things, and that's great. To have something which is a real OS, I mean uh, that you have a whole distribution uh, with usual programs and people just log into it and, and have their usual comments and uh, they are not lost, uh, it's really hard. Uh, it was mentioned in the um, uh, Debian on uh, Risk Five talk that just getting Perl to compile is really a lot of work, and we do have it on the herd because somebody did it in the past, and we do have it for GCC, for G GDB, and all kinds of things. So we have already all of this, which is uh, already there. Um, we just need a few things to have it uh, even more uh, to the point of uh, being a usable uh, system. So thanks for listening, and thanks for all the people who have been working on it. Uh, you have the website uh, for more information. Thanks. The question. One question, and I have time for more. So okay. Yeah? Um, so you said a lot of, of things about what could happen now. Yeah. Um, what I missed is what improved in the past three years. So um, I showed what, what we could do and uh, what happened in the past three years. Basically, um, what I mentioned here, uh, so the PCI Arbiter and ACPI Translator, the RAMP as well, I think, um, so that was, yeah, uh, 2016. Um, so basically, these points are the ones which are hot, uh, but there are not many people working on it, so it's at, at really s slow pace. There is nobody full-time or things like this. It's only... Uh, um, part time, um, I, I mean, uh, home time, basically. Maybe the question more concrete what was finished in the past three years? <laughs> what was finished? Um, so that people can now test it on a running herd. So the PCI arbiter is finished. I, I mean, uh, here, uh, my, my herd system here is actually sh showing it, I think. Um, yes, so. The XORG actually uses it nowadays to, to access because we have NetDD which accesses the, the network board and XORG as well. So yes, we have to have we had to have something finished for this. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. We can miss. Uh,